Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to Top 10 One Album Wonders. So these are bands and artists that put out one album and then for whatever reason, that was it. It's a one and done sort of deal. Uh, no additional uh, albums or things came out. Not uh, worried about archival stuff. If that came out, that's fine, but they are just simply a one and done deal. We're gonna dive into that top 10 countdown on those albums. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, it's an added bonus. By subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on really cool videos just like this, top 10 one album wonders. So uh, to start, I did predominantly focus on rock and didn't really get into um, metal and things like that and stuff but also i ruled out two bands that probably a lot of people would include in here one of them being the sex pistols uh the, the band reformed and put out filthy lucre in 1997 and so for me that's uh, not a one and done and they've been uh, doing you know tours and things like that and stuff and the other one being mad season and that band actually recorded three new songs in 2013 and put it out on the deluxe edition of Above. And they recorded a live album in 2015, a new one. So I ended up deciding to exclude those two, but I've got 10 others that are true one and done bands. And we're gonna dive into that right now. So kicking things off, coming in at number 10, Orion the Hunter, their self-titled 1984 album, offshoot of the band Boston, uh, originally known simply as Orion. Unfortunately, the uh, movie picture company that was called Orion Pictures at the time, I don't think they're around anymore, took issue with this, so they became Orion the Hunter. And the band features Barry Goudreau on guitar, of course, former Boston member, but the cool thing was, not known at the time, years later, the lead vocalist Fran Cosmo would become a member of Boston. So incidentally, we actually have two Boston members as part of this group here. Uh, the other guys that round out the album, Bruce Smith on bass and Michael DeRoser on drums, but just really good. It's basically, uh, you know, an 80s sounding version of Boston, very heavy with the keyboards and that sort of stuff. But I love it nonetheless. And it was a great sort of uh, tied me over album until we finally got the third Boston album at the time. Okay, coming in at number nine, KBC band, self-titled 1986 release, uh, legacy group from Jefferson Airplane and Jefferson Starship featuring uh, the K, the B, the C, Paul Kantner, Marty Balin, and Jack Cassidy. Uh, what was also cool about this lineup was at the time with uh, their guitar player, uh, Slick uh, Aguilar, if I'm saying that right, uh, he'd become a future Jefferson Starship member. So same sort of thing um, where we actually have, looking back at this now, more members from uh, the legacy group of Airplane and Starship uh, playing on this thing. And uh, this band, I think, was really done to capitalize on the success of the band that was just Starship after they had dropped the Jefferson from it that had really kind of exploded and been so big. So this is, again, picking up with that sort of 80s thing. And it seemed like with the 80s, there was a lot of super groups and things that happened as that was a big uh, cash in sort of thing at the time. We're gonna hit on a lot of those as part of the rest of this countdown here. But you know, for people who liked that uh, late 70s, very early 80s sound of Jefferson Starship, it was continued on KBC, so it was a good thing. Coming in at number eight, we've got Keats, self-titled 1984 album. It was actually named after a restaurant. I forget which member really dug that name and wanted it to be that, so they just kind of all agreed to it. But it was one of those things that was sort of like, what does that even mean? And incidentally, it probably did hurt them in the end. Uh, one will never know since they only put the one album out. But um, it was an offshoot of Alan Parsons' project and featured a lot of cool members. We've got Col Colin Blundstone in here on vocals, who of course from Alan Parsons' project, but also the 60s group, The Zombies, uh, Ian Berenson on guitar, Alan Parsons' project, and David Patton on bass 
also Alan Parsons project. Then we got Pete Barden's on keyboards coming from the group Camel, the prog rock group. So that was pretty cool. And Stuart Elliott on drums from Cockney Rebel. Not really fitting in the same vein as the rest of those guys, the prog sort of stuff, but uh, doing a great job nonetheless. So um, I don't really know if this was promoted at the time as a super group, but incidentally, in the end, all the guys did come from somewhere. And if you're a fan of Alan Parsons' project, I actually end up liking this. This was like a sort of a lost album because it was really, really good start to finish on here. Very uh, catchy material and whatnot, and just very solid writing throughout. I love this album. All right, next one up, number seven, GTR, self-titled release, 1986. All shoot to capitalize on the success of the supergroup Asia, who one of the members from here, we got two of the most amazing guitar players, Steve Howe, of course coming from Yes, but also Asia. He had left the band, wanted to form a new uh, group to capitalize on the success of that and brought in another amazing guitar player, Steve Hackett of Genesis, hence the name GTR or guitar. Uh, the band also featured Max Bacon on vocals, Phil Spaulding on bass, who unfortunately just passed away. So rest in peace, Pete. Certainly you will be missed, but not forgotten. You did an amazing job on this album here. And Jonathan Mover on drums from Marillion. So again, another super group here. Unfortunately, it was a one and done. This album is outstanding from top to bottom. If you're a fan of Yes or Genesis, uh, you're gonna love this thing here. It is just simply uh, superb uh, songwriting on this thing. And definitely right in the vein of Asia. Again, I don't know how it didn't just take off the same way. All right, uh, one of the first uh, most famous supergroups uh, there ever was. Coming in at number six, Blind Faith, self-titled release from 1969 with the original album cover there. Uh, formed from the ashes of Cream and Traffic. And we got Eric Clapton on guitar and vocals from Cream along with his pal Ginger Baker on drums. And then we've got Steve Winwood on keyboards and vocals from Traffic and Spencer Davis Group and Rick Gretsch on bass from Family, who would also go on to play with Traffic and Ginger Baker's Air Force. So again, you know, one of those things when you look back at it uh, later on, that's just that much more that makes it uh, intriguing. And um, I don't really know what was the huge single at the time per se, but I found the group years later through the song Can't Find My Way Home When House of Lords, late 80s, early 90s, um, you know, melodic rock, glam metal, if you will, band covered it and was all over the radio. Come to find out a lot of people have covered that song and done it. So it was one of those things where I knew this song, didn't know it came from a group called Blind Faith. But the whole album, again, from start to finish, and the thing is, there's only six tracks on this thing, but a number of them are really long songs. And for me, it's one of those things now where I go back and listen to it, and being a huge Steve Winwood fan, it just always fits what I need at that time. Coming in at number five, Mother Love Bone, Apple, from 1990. Uh, band featured Andrew Wood on vocals from Malfunction, Jeff Amet on bass from Green River, who would go on to Pearl Jam, Stone Gossard on guitar also from Green River and would go on to Pearl Jam, Bruce Fairweather on guitar from Love Battery, and Greg Gilmore on drums from 10 Minute Warning, the band that featured Duff McKagan, who would go on to Guns N' Roses. So a little bit of a super group. Uh, again, wasn't being promoted as such at the time, but it definitely had people all coming and going from different places. Unfortunately, though, lead vocalist Andrew Wood would die literally days before the album would come out, grinding any momentum they had to a halt. But, you know, that's arguable, too, that it didn't just push it over the top because it's such a tragedy and all the people talking about it. That's how I found out about it at the time. Uh, maybe it is in the end of the day what pushed it over. Maybe the album would have come out and done nothing. Uh, who knows if it hadn't had all that publicity behind it. But either way, a very unfortunate, tragic thing that happened there. Um, the thing is, it, uh, you know, had that not happened, you know, and, and ultimately the uh, Andrew Wood's passing would lead to 
Another uh, one album wonder band, Temple of the Dog. I opted to go for Mother Love Bone over Temple of the Dog, even though that is a fantastic album with Chris Cornell on that there. But um, of course, with uh, Mother Love Bone and uh, The Passing Andrew Wood, it leads to Pearl Jam. So, you know, not all bad in the end of the day as far as that is concerned. Okay, coming in at number four, Hughes Thrall self-titled release from 1982 featuring, of course, Glenn Hughes on bass and vocals. Uh, let's see, what has he been a part of? Trappies, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, uh, Black Country Communion, currently with the Dead Daisies. I mean, he's been around. I'm probably leaving out some projects that he's done, and he's just had a stellar solo career as well. And then we got Pat Thrall on guitar. Uh, Pat Travers Band, Asia, Meatloaf. Hasn't done as much recording, but he's definitely been around playing with a lot of people and artists and stuff. Apparently, a second album was started in 1997, worked on it for 10 years, got a release date in 2007, but was later canceled. Glenn Hughes saying that 10 years for Pat to record and produce an album is too long and he simply decided to move on. So potentially there is a second album out there for Hughes Thrall, but we may never see it. It has now been another almost, well, 15 years since then. So I decided to go ahead and include them as a one album wonder, but one day, maybe this video will be out of date if we ever get that uh, second Hughes Thrall. And I hope we do. I hope they prove me wrong. <laughs> All right, coming in at number three, HSAS Through the Fire 1984 album that featured the HSAS Sammy Hagar on vocals and guitar then Neil Sean on guitar Kenny Aronson on bass and Michael Shreve on drums a cool little super group that was put together to capitalize on things um, you know at the time and Interestingly, the album was recorded live between November 9th and November 21st in 1983, but then they went into the studio and stripped away or turned down as much of the noise that they could. And it's only heard very briefly at different points in the music. Uh, mostly, I mean, for a long time, I thought it was a studio album, only having heard bits of it, but of course, later finding this out and so forth. I'm not sure exactly why they chose to do that on it, but it is a really good album and it's sort of a, you know, wonder what they could have done. I've always really wanted to know what uh, Neil Sean and Sammy Hagar could have done had they been in a band that would have done, you know, real forward momentum and stuff like that. This is a little taste of it. We almost got something years later with, um, a pairing they were going to do at the time and then unfortunately that fell apart and later would turn into soul circus but um, for now at least we have this album here coming in at number two we've got jim steinman bad for good 1981 offshoot of the hugely successful meatloaf album bat out of hell that was really supposed to be meatloaf and jim steinman but it didn't happen that way so later on he records this and this part uh, was also because Meatloaf was having vocal issues. So the songs on here were intended as the follow-up to Bat Out of Hell, the first one. And he recorded it. Unfortunately, it kind of sank without a trace. It didn't really do a whole lot. But I love this album from top to bottom. It is so good. It's just up there with some real class in terms of uh, music and melody and everything that he could write and do. Lots of the tracks that are on here would go on to become part of later day Meatloaf albums and Jim Steinman moved into production and things of that later as opposed to staying as a solo artist and he would bring these songs and have other people do it. So now going back and listening to it, it's kind of like a greatest hits of all these awesome projects that Jim Steinman did. Okay, and coming in at number one, we have Coverdale Page, self-titled 1993 release uh, following the breakup of white snake and a failed led zeppelin reunion we have david coverdale uh, on vocals coming from deep purple and of course white snake but then jimmy page on guitar uh, as i said from led zeppelin but also the firm coming together to create this cool project here remember white snake was on top of the world in 1990 91 that era of things and jimmy page was still riding high throughout the 80s and so forth so uh you know this was a huge huge deal when it came out at the time unfortunately it didn't do too much and there was a, a tour and i don't know how far the tour got but i had tickets and the tour got canceled so 
I don't know if they ended up doing a lot of live shows or they didn't do a lot of live shows, but it all just kind of fell apart and it didn't really go anywhere. And this is another one where there are five songs that were additionally recorded at the time. Nothing was done with it, but the rumor is that uh, David Coverdale and Jimmy Page are completing those songs for a deluxe edition of this box set that will come out later this year. Um, I'm kind of considering that as archival material, which is why I decided to go ahead and include it. But who knows? We could get a whole new album or something. And again, they would prove me wrong as uh, this not being a one album wonder or something. But there you go. That is my top 10 one album wonders. Check back on Tuesdays. I'm going to be starting um, top 10 countdowns and we are going to have top 10 Tuesdays for a while. See how that goes. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, do share it out on social media. Help spread the word and uh, everyone take care. Have a good one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.